welcome to uh, this segment of the press where we get to take a look at uh, major stories on a, a daily. So let's begin with The Guardian, right? And uh, the picture of the day here is all about the launch of Ibubi Agu, that's a tiger's glory, like we just talked about. And this is aimed at tackling uh, unrest in Nigeria's southeast. Uh, away from the uh, picture of the day, let's uh, take a look at the major headline here. Uh, just below the masthead, you have gas constraints keep Nigerians in darkness amid uh, 203 TCF reserves. And then you have three riders to that story. You have how physical, or fiscal, beg your pardon, uprising regimes undermine Nigeria's gas development. Then you have financial liquidity stalls, uh, 6,000 megawatts worth of gas needed for power. Also, you have, uh, despite tariff increase, uh, Jenko's remittances below 30%. And then uh, some other stories on the front page of The Guardian. Sultan asks Muslims to search for new moon. And right below that story, we have this one here, uh, Petrol Union, CBN, UBN, uh, 2.5 billion pounds case resumes tomorrow at the Supreme Court. Uh, those are some of the screaming headlines on the front page of The Guardian. All right, we'll move to the Nigerian Tribune and see what we can find here. The you know, big one there says, uh, of course, it's for the PDP Southwest Congress. It says, Makinde Fayoshe in final showdown as 743 delegates elect, or rather elect, 22 officers. Also, Southeast governors set up joint security outfit codenamed Ibubeagu. Matawale's attack on Southerners, reckless and insensitive. Gani Adams, Yoruba group, is saying. Also this morning, look out for Ramadan moon today, Sultan tells Muslims. And uh, 10 Kwara schools resume classes today, and that's with regards to the hijab controversy. Federal government to meet striking judicial workers today. Jusun says CGN can't meet demands. And Sarah asks uh, the RMAFC to cut salaries of Buhari governors and lawmakers. Asup rejects federal government's appointment of rectors for five new polytechnics. Also this morning, gunmen attack police station in Cross River, cut away AK-47 rifles. Printing money to augment allocation poses threats to Nigeria's future, and that's from experts. That's all we have on the uh, Nigerian Tribune this morning. Okay. I got the punch here. We uh, got pictures from the launch of, of uh, Ibibagu splashed all across the front page of the punch. And then a major headline here uh, is this one. DMO blames COVID-19. Uh, experts say borrowing from CBN dangerous, uh, talking about the rising debt. Uh, also, we got three riders to that story, US, UK, other countries borrowed more as a result of COVID-19. That's coming from the, the DMO. And then printing money will lead to uh, hyperinflation. That's coming from the former CIIN Director General. And then this one here says that we are not aware of printing of 60 billion naira, as Obaseki claimed. That's coming from the CBN and the FBN. I'm sure Saogi and I are going to be talking about that much Absolutely. more later. And of course, above the masthead, you have this one here, Firm Backs FG on plan to ban syringe importation. Uh, you also have this one below the masthead, uh, right below there. Uh, Ramadan, look out for Moon Sultan, tells Muslims. And then you have Ogun kidnappers in army camouflage, uh, flee on bike with 13-year-old boy, demand 50 million naira. Uh, ransom uh, that is alarming and then last but not least bad belle stopped abiola from becoming president guess who that's coming from <laughs> former president of basenjo all right yeah. uh moving on to the nation newspapers this morning makinde fire shave factions battle for slots at pdp congress nba urges probe of military invasion in Benue state and uh, we can also find here Nigeria needs 1.4 trillion naira to bridge telecoms access uh, gap. Southeast governors launch a Bubeagu security outfit. And the big one there says 774,000 public jobs workers protest on paid 20,000 naira wage. 
gunmen kill two in Ondo, abduct priest in Imo state, and Sultan to Muslims look out for moon. We can also see here Okonjo Wella would drive global trade, says the World Bank. Oni seeks support for Olu of Wari designate, and 17 called suspects, um, I guess, have been arrested and guns held. All right, those are the big stories that we're looking at this morning. Good morning to our analyst for today, Mr. Tunde Kolawole. Thank you very much Good for joining morning, us. Good morning, my brother. All right, um, the big one, Thanks of course, in um, most of the papers is talking of the Southeast Security Network, uh, Ibu uh, Let's start from there. What are your thoughts? There's already some criticism uh, concerning that. Well, uh, let me quickly say that... Uh, Whatever is going to bring peace to any part of Nigeria should be a welcome development. There has been too much bloodshed in Nigeria. There has been too much damages to the properties of citizens. There has been too much lack of peace all over the country. Not just in the southeast, but also in the southwest and the northern parts of the country. So to that extent, I would want to say that um, the establishment of uh, Ebu Beago should be a worthy addition to the security armada that we already have uh, on the ground. But uh, somehow, if we take into cognizance the experience uh, in the southwest uh, and even in the northern parts of the country, where we have Ishba, and in the south where we have Amateku. As the establishment of those security outfits really helped in coping the level, the high level of insecurity in those places, the answer is said no. Rather, we see those security outfits when they are first established, they will run around the places for about one or two months and then sink into the morass of some of the other security outfits that have been established uh, by them. Uh, just as you have read in your paper today, there is a kidnapping in Ogun State, there are, there is kidnapping in Ondo State, and then uh, the North Central is also not uh, doing fine. So, this additional layer of security has not proven to be efficacious in addressing the challenges of uh, insecurity. Furthermore, the Southeast governors have an Akulian task in their hands, that is, harmonizing the activities of Ebubiagu with that of uh, the Eastern Nigeria Security Network. You and I will know that there is no love lost between the establishment, the authorities, the governors in the Southeast and the leadership of IPOP who established the Eastern Security Network. So the possibilities are that those two security outfits in the Southeast now, the ESN and then the Bubuagu, will be working at cross purposes and there's likely to be clashes between them. So rather than solve or elevate the security challenges in the Southeast, the possibilities are that it may aggravate it to the extent that uh, there is going to be a competition for supremacy. There is likely to be a competition for supremacy among the two security outfits, the prominent security outfits that we now have in the South uh, uh, East. Right, the don't... truth of the matter is that um, we've been scratching the problem on the surface. The root cause of the insecurity that we have in the country, we are not addressing it. And until we have addressed the root cause of the insecurity, every step that we take to address the issue or the challenges superficially is not likely to yield the dividends or the results that the average Nigerian person desires at this period in time. We all want to be able to sleep with our two eyes closed without anybody walking to the comfort of our homes to pick us like chicken yeah, but and I... bury us to unknown destinations to start torturing us and 
asking that our parents or our relations, our fathers and mothers, come up with ransom before we can regain our freedom. Mr. Kolawale, can I just jump in here a bit? All right. right. You, you talked about harmony between Ibubiagu and the ESN. Should there be harmony in the first place? You just said that there's no love lost between these two agencies. So should there even be harmony? Should there be synergy between the security outfit and the ESN, which the government doesn't even recognize? Yeah. Where there could be harmony to the extent that uh, you find out the responsibilities for these two security outfits and the ultimate goal in view is to guarantee peace protect lives and property so ordinarily there could be some working understanding between the two security outfits if those who establish them desire that that kind of a situation should take place. But the truth of the matter is that um, there are two contending forces for domination, for supremacy, for the takeover of the political structures in the Southeast. The ESN want a new uh, a political order. The governors want to retain, no want to continue to preserve the old political order. These are two conflicting goals. That is the only reason why there could be no harmony between them. Okay. Otherwise, yes, if it is all about trying to preserve lives and property and guarantee security to people, there could be some modicum of working understanding to the satisfaction of everybody. All right, Mr. Kolawole, I believe that we will continue to watch and see how these things play out. Um, with time. But let's move on to something else. Uh, there's another big conversation in the papers this morning, and that is uh, from statements made by Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki that the federal government allegedly printed as much as 60 billion naira to share at the uh, F, uh, FAC, you know, for March. Mm -hmm. um, what are your concerns with this, and do you see anything also, you know, alarming with that? Well, let me say I am the first Nigerian to raise an alarm that uh, the governments at both the local government level, at the state level, and at the federal level have gone bankrupt. That they have borrowed all that is borrowable, and yet they have not been able to find solution to the financial liquidity that has bedeviled all the three tiers of government. And I also said I raise an alarm that the government of the, at the center is just printing money to finance its programs, activities, and pay salaries. And I said sooner than later, the international community, or that some of these things will come out. And once it come out, Nigeria is going to be in very, very serious mess. Well, but because I'm not the governor, nobody paid any attention to the alarm that I raised. Obasaki is merely restating the obvious for quite some time now. That is what the government at the center has been doing, which we have all pretended is not happening, or which the government has been trying to cover up. The truth of the matter is uh, printing money to just spend it is a very, very serious crime before the international community. Apart from the fact that is likely to lead to high inflation, hyperinflation, and then the destruction of your own local currency, in which nobody will want to touch uh, your currency again, in which nobody will want to spend the Naira again. The international community will not stand by and allow Nigeria to merely be printing money and using that money to import goods and services that their own citizens have labored so hard to produce. So sooner than later, Nigeria is going to be treated as a pariah nation in the community of nations, okay. such that no serious country will want to do any serious business with us. And we all saw this coming. The Nigerian problem when the APC and Buhari came to power was not beyond redemption. In fact, what people, why many people voted for the APC and voted for Buhari 
was because they think he is a very prudent person that he will look into the course of governance. He will look into the course of financing this political structure, this unwieldy political structure. He will also cut the excesses of the Nigerian allies who engage in uh, ethnic consumption, Mr. Kolawale, imported goods. Mr. Kolawale, See? All right. permit me again to jump in. I'm so sorry. All right. Yeah, All but, right. but at the risk of playing the devil's advocate here, Nigeria yeah. just came out of recession and the IMF said, oh, wait, I'm shocked. We didn't know you guys were going to come out this fast. Right. So I'm, I'm reacting to the way you're painting the country as a failed yeah. state. Yeah. Nigeria does not have a monopoly on poverty, especially after the pandemic hit. It's a yeah. global phenomenon right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. But let's talk about the viability of states. So Governor Basek is crying wolf, right? But did he share in the monies that were shared in March? Is his state not shouting for the federal government to come and fund the NSF, which they said they were going to shut down because the federal government was not bringing monies? How are the states contributing to the growth of the nation? Does he have a right to cry wolf? <laughs> that is the paradox of the Nigerian nation. You see, when um, uh, the Yoruba staff is saying that uh, you saw a man carrying uh, a load or something on his head and the load is not properly balanced. That, and then you start criticizing him. You are criticizing him in ignorance because you haven't looked at the structure upon which he stands at his legs. If the man is a crippled person or physically challenged person, there is no way he could properly balance whatever is carrying on his head. The Nigerian federalism is a skilled federalism. It is a federalism that does not encourage all the three tires of government to be productive. The structures were just created to rely on oil that is coming from the Niger Delta. And now that the oil is no longer coming from the Niger Delta, all the three tires of government have always been indolent. The challenge of putting on a thinking cap and seekers have to begin to generate revenue to finance their programs, to pay salaries, and develop the infrastructure in the country. They have proved incapable of doing that. So, like you said, ordinarily, you shouldn't lie in the mouth of Obaseke to start raising the kind of alarms that he has raised. Because he himself has been governor for four years. What is the performance of the locally generated revenue? the idea of the state compared to what he's getting from the federal level to merit him from i mean to begin to say or to begin to cry the kind of word that is crying when his own performance locally at the state level is at cinema it's uh, nothing to write home about it All is right. not encouraging that's uh so he himself uh, could be said to be blamable or to be liable for what is happening at the center. All right, let, let's move on, uh, uh, Mr. Kolawole, because of time. Let's, right. let's move to the, there's a story on the nation that says NBA urges probe of military invasion of Benue. Uh, there were reports last week of uh, uh, the military, of course, uh, attacking certain positions in, in Benue state uh, that, you know, led to, you know, lots of chaos. Uh, do you agree that there should be a probe? And, you know, you know is this another example of the military's high-handedness, you know, in, you know, in the approach to fighting insecurity. Absolutely. I agree with the MBA. What has happened in Benue State is a crime against humanity that should not be condoned at all. It is only in Nigeria that that kind of a thing can happen without an uproar. By now, I had expected that it wouldn't just be the MBA that will be crying, but different segments of the society as well. We have seen it separately happen in the past. It happened in Nodi. It happened in the Southeast, several times in the Southeast. It happened in the South-South. And then also uh, Benue. And uh, I think at the time, uh, I don't well know whether it's Taraba or uh, one of these other I mean, um, states in the Middle West. Too many times, the Nigerian army have always handled a minor problem 
with a sledge armor and we say that is an irresponsible behavior that the international community will not condone. If one or two persons had ambushed or lay an ambush for the Nigerian army and killed their personnel, what one would have expected is for the Nigerian army to deploy intelligence to apprehend these people and bring them to book, not for you to take uh, attack uh, helicopters, uh, rocket launchers, and then the infantry soldiers to invade the community, leveling houses, killing innocent people, just because of the infraction of about maybe seven or, or ten people. But that shouldn't be tolerated at all. The bullets that they use, the bomb that they deploy, the attack helicopters that they use to bomb the people were bought with the taxpayers' money. And it is therefore an irresponsible behavior for you to start deploying weapons that the people bought for you to protect them against the same people. So I totally support the MPA. In fact, in my humble opinion, it shouldn't be handled locally. It should be an international issue in which those who have perpetrated that criminality will be taken before the International Criminal Court as Hague and adequately punished for okay. crime against humanity. Okay. Until we begin to treat these people the way they deserve to be treated, this arrogance on the part of the security people will never abate. Right. Because this is what we see them do too many times without any consequences. All right, quickly also... They descended on the... Uh, Mr. Kola, will you quickly also uh, share in a minute or less your views on the Shea Makinde and Fire Shea showdown in the, the PDP Southwest uh, Congress? Well, I am surprised that uh, Makinde and Fire Shell were engaged in the kind of tango that they have engaged in. Why do I say this? I thought the PDP ought to have seen the serious challenges that they have in their hands of returning to power. And if they know they have an Aquilian task of getting power back, they ought to put their houses in order. All these little skirmishes, this uh, storm in a teacup, why shouldn't be seen with them? What we want to see is for them to be able to close hands and be able to pose as a credible alternative, as a serious challenge, as an opposition party that is ready for power to the APC. Right, Mr. But Kola. with the kind of squabble we are saying, it would appear to me there isn't any difference between the APC, the PDP, and some of all these other political parties that we had on the ground today. Everything is about power, capturing of power at all costs, power without uh, conscience, power with responsibility, power without thought for the feelings of the suffering of the Nigerian people. So, right. people, oh. the, the people in the PDP should, for God's sake, sit up for the case of the Nigerian people right. so that we can begin to, to see Nicola the shape of things to come, come 2023. To Nicola Wale, thank you so much uh, for your time this morning and for you. You know, expressing yourself on these stories. Looking forward to Thanks another for conversation with me. you. Thank you. Absolutely. Wish you a lovely day. You too. You too. All right. Uh, so many questions and so many points raised in uh, off the press this morning. We mm -hmm. hope that um, in the course of the program this morning, we may you know be able to unbundle a lot more of these uh, issues. Thanks uh, for staying with us. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're going into today in history here on the breakfast. <laughs>